What is going on everyone? My name's Jack. My name's Harry. We are Jack and Harry. Welcome to our YouTube channel. We're going to be posting a lot more on here over the next couple of months. So this weekend we decided we're going to run a tutorial, uh, but we put it to you guys to decide which song we were going to walk through. And the answer was underneath. So for those of you that haven't actually heard underneath yet, let's take a listen. So Underneath is our biggest song to date, it's on about 1.7 million streams on Spotify, a uh, really big moment for us in terms of establishing ourselves yeah. as revealed artists yeah. as well. Plus it's with our guy Nino, whose voice is just amazing, but without further ado, let's get straight into the project. Okay, so I'm going to kind of work left to right on the project, I think we'll start with the break. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, so let's build up the break. Um, I'll come to the vocal a bit later, but um, I think we'll start with some of the main elements yeah. which make like a Jack and Harry break. I think that's the main things which you guys have been asking for. Uh, a yeah. general bit about atmosphere, um, piano, it's all, always in our song. Yeah, so generally Harry and I work in quite a weird way. I'd like say we, it is. It's not weird for us, but no, we so, can imagine that for some guys it's um So Harry different. is very much like the the artist he's a lot more creative than i am yeah. uh, so he'll he'll send me like chords melodies arps and stuff and then i'll put it into logic and we'll kind of build the track like that so harry would have sent me these chords And gem generally, that's how all of our songs start, isn't it? Yeah, basically, I just get a really simple Logic project up, um, a Nexus piano usually, or um, you know anything really. True pianos are really good as well. Get the chords done, establish some kind of arrangement so that we have a rough idea of what a song's going to look like, and then just a general top line uh, piano MIDI is usually how it starts. We find it a lot easier to write around vocals, uh, which yeah. was the case with this one. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we heard a vocal from Nino, uh, which was originally in about 105 BPM. It was, so, really, it was really slow. Yeah, um, so it was at a time as well, we, were, um, we didn't have a, a publisher or anything, so we, we just took a shot in the dark on it, um, dropped a fair bit of money, which you young producers will know about. It's, yep. um, it's a risk, but you, you know, you've got to back yourself. It's not very comfortable, but sometimes you know, paying that money for a vocal can you know, change things in a massive way. So, um, and generally, that's how all of our breaks starts. We've got a piano here uh, with a, just a basic Nexus piano, and then we've layered that with um, a more real sounding piano so they sound complete together. Um, and there's this little layer on top, which is quite a weird sound from Spire, if I play it for you on its own. So this is actually just a really simple Nexus Grand Piano layered with something which, um, I'm not sure where I came across it, I think I read somewhere that Adele, uh, Hello, was made <laughs> yeah. on the, the Waves Grand Piano. I think we find when you layer that with Nexus, it sounds complete. And then we've got this little ARP sound. If I play you that without the plugins on it, it'll sound completely different. So with this, I've just EQ'd at the highs and the lows um, because generally, I, when I'm mixing the breaks, I don't really want anything to clash with the vocal. Camel Crusher adds this distortion. The idea behind this was to give a guitar atmosphere. Yeah. Um, absolutely love guitars and pianos, so this was the main element which creates that atmosphere right from the start of the song. Uh, I just EQ'd out some harsh frequencies around here. Added some OTT and then a bit more EQ and that ARP kind of moves throughout the break. So with the pianos it sounds like this. You'll also notice here that Harry's changed the chords. Um, the main thing which we always try and do is we're always trying to drive the energy and build the energy up towards our breakdowns, our drops. Um, this was something which um, we've done a lot of the time, but the rhythm really, really works well with uh, the melody and the vocal in particular. 
So then from this point, uh, it was just a case of adding some pads. This is probably the main pad that you cure in the brake. Um, so all of that is kind of the base of the brake. And then, like Harry said, it's a case of adding in little vocal samples, little strings, and you get this. So once we've got an atmosphere and uh, a general vibe with the piano underneath, uh, it's a case of Jack starts looking for some drums. So here there's, there's a few little things, there's a, a clock, some shakers, a nice little ride, a little kick loop. Very simple, you know, just like a, a kick and snare rhythm with some hi-hats. Uh, and then this builds into the kind of the moment, as we like to call it, of yeah. the song. Uh, kind of that, that moment where hands go up in the air if you're at a yeah. festival, everyone yeah. starts to sing the hook. Yeah, so if I, if I mute the vocal, I'll play this part for you. So the main thing you'll notice here is that we bring in our sort of signature lead. It's not really a signature, is it? It's just a kind of like a piano on a, on a string. And when you hear that, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, the underneath is coming. So as Jack said, this is just really, really basic sounds. Mainly the same piano as we've used for the chords. So uh, Nexus, uh, one of the Waves Grand Pianos, True Pianos is one which we've been using recently. Layered with, uh, you know, that signature string sound. And this, these are all sounds which end up in the main drop lead, but it just kind of teases of what's to come, that growing sensation as the filter opens up. Yeah, so that is layered, and you also hear the leads coming in in the background. So that helps to build attention there as you go into the build-up. Just some simple elements. So I think now we'll talk about the thing that most people probably want to know and that is the lead sounds. It's actually quite funny looking back at this project because we made it two years ago. It would have been about two years ago, so this is by far the project which we spent the most time on. I'm, I'm talking months. <laughs> but the, the main thing I realise is that we used a lot of layers. In the, uh, yeah. I'm not quite sure I would use this many nowadays, but I think there's 11 lead layers in this. So I'm not going to go through in detail each one, but I will play them all and then you'll see how, the, how they all group together. So this is the main sort of sound. Just like a very simple, I think, Nexus. Nexus layer. Starts to give it some support. Um, yeah, all sounds which, you know, you can start to hear growing. This is just a weird sort of vocal sample from Omnisphere. This is one of the main leads and it's kind of... Voicey. Voicey layer yeah. from Silent, isn't it? Um, yeah. Then there's some just white noise from Logic's um, ESP. A very cheesy Nexus saw yeah. which just gives that energy in the high end. Classic E piano. Just to give it a transient. A very, very high layer, but I think this really gives energy in the drop. It won't be a high volume, but if you take it away, you'll miss it. Another high, verby type lead. 
and then these super soles which are very wide and detuned. They almost sound like hard style leads, they're, they're that detuned. <laughs> and then just the same sole, just an octave up. So yeah, each layer has a different task, doesn't it? Some of them are playing in a higher octave, some of them are playing yeah. uh, wide in the stereo, some of them are playing mono down the middle. They all try and complement each other. But the magic of this one really comes uh, with the processing of the lead bus. Yeah, so if I take all of the plugins off the lead bus, You'll notice that it kind of sounds similar, but it misses that sort of body in the one to two K range, but there's also too many high frequencies. So there's a few plugins, which I'm sure you've all seen people use before. You know, there's uh, Saturn just for some saturation, an EQ cutting off the lows, um, the glue just to do some mild compression, a bit more EQ and some OTT. So probably all plugins that you've seen people use on leads before. But the main element is this wow filter. Um, I'll play it without and then I'll play it with. You'll just notice that this completely tames the highs, doesn't yeah. it? While creating a warm package of sound in the mid-range. You can see here, the low pass cuts off the highs, like Harry said, but then it adds this like body and it gives it power. Again, I'm not sure why I did this. <laughs> okay, so that is pretty much the leads. With kick and bass, it's been one of those things which um, I know Jack has spent many, many <laughs> hours perfecting the mix on. Days. Uh, days, yeah. weeks, years. Yeah. So the kick is just standard. There are five bass layers. Again, that's quite a lot. Uh, so we've got a low sine wave, which is just a um, basic sine from Nexus. A little bit of saturation, EQ, and then um, LFO tool. The second sound will be more of a, like a higher sub. Uh, so you'll hear it on like laptops, AirPods, etc but it's just the basic sound you open when you open silent. EQ'd out the um, extreme lows and the highs, so it's, it's kind of 108 to 430. Just gives room for uh, these next layers to shine through. And then a little bit of overdrive and some sidechain compression, but not as, as heavy as the, um, the sub. So those two together sound like this, which is a solid low end. is a mid layer there's nothing really on it and then we've got a guitar layer which is something we like to do a lot so this is from massive i think it is a preset from splice um, i've got some compression here so that all notes are consistent again this is just another mid layer I believe it's just another splice preset. And then there's this like stuttery one, which it's plays triplets on triplets. top of the other bass layers uh, to give it a rolling sensation. So all together. So then we play that with the leads. And you've got the fundamentals of the track. One thing which we always like to do, we like to add some really high chord layers on top of the lead sounds. And the idea behind it is to create energy, but then to support the top line sounds as it goes through the drop. So again, these are all just basic sounds, which um, as you'll notice, most of them are from the If You. Yeah. Uh, a project which uh, if you guys want us to walk through, let us know in the comments below and we'll take a look at that. So this one's from Spire. I think it's from the Factory Bank. But these are all basic sounds. A piano. Then we've got this choir sound. There's some really, really great sounds in honesty. For the organic sound, we haven't found anything better at the moment. This is just a basic saw, just to give some energy. Another saw, not sure why, but... Um, if we were going to make this song again, we would make it completely different. It's actually quite weird looking through it now, because you're like, oh, I don't know if I'd do that nowadays. A kind of bell pad.
strong uh, nexus. And then once we added this all together, uh, we started to build a rhythm to the drop. So we've got the kick, we've got the bass, we've got the lead, and we've got the chord. Okay, so Then it was a case of adding some drums and percussion and some little effects. Uh, so if we start to add these in, we've got some hats. Playing just little fills, something we do a lot. Uh, we've got the rides, which are the main element of the drop. If I play these with and without, you'll notice now. Where'd the energy go? We like to leave a lot of space at the top end of our song so that we can have full control over the high. Yeah, a lot of demos we get from people have like really high lead and high percussion and you kind of need one or the other. We always assumed as well that when you're opening up a filter or you're EQing that it should go yeah. to 20k. Yeah. And we, we've realized that that is way, way yeah. too high, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you, want, you want to be cutting off everything above, you know, 16k really, unless yeah. it's like, you know, some real, really quiet white noise. So yeah, then we, we kept uh, building through just a, a crash, some claps from the cashmere packs. Um, a tom which rebounds off the kick. The whole idea of, of your percussion should be listen to your melody and pick elements which help drive that forward. The percussion should complement your top line, should like add emphasis on the parts of the yeah. melody which really drive home. All the drums sound like this. That's pretty much the drop, and then all we add in are just the effects that you've seen everyone use. Basic down lifters. Some risers going into the middle of the drop. And from a workflow perspective, as you can see, um, a lot of our um, audio files actually come from previous projects. So I'd really, yeah. really, really recommend you go through your old projects, save all the samples or the, all the cool audio files yeah. that you've made in one place. And then when you're making build-ups, you make your you know, impacts and stuff, you can just quickly drag them in so it doesn't kill your workflow. Makes it so much quicker if you can do that. I don't think you have to reinvent the wheel uh, every time you start a new track. Altogether, the drop sounds like this. So that's the first drop. Uh, the second half of the track doesn't change too much. Uh, there's one additional element in the second drop which we want to show you. But the main thing which uh, we're still quite proud of, I'd say, uh, in making it is the second break strings in underneath. It gives it such a, a yeah. cool vibe, such a cool like, organic atmosphere. And this is one which I know Jack is still proud of to this day, uh, writing this uh, melody. This is, this is probably my favorite part of the song. I, I love these strings, the way these sound. Like, listen to these. And on these I've got the multi-presser, which is just, just a little multi-brand on the strings compressor setting. Small amount of EQ, just boosting the highs. Space designer for some reverb, quite a long reverb because I wanted them to sit in the background behind Nino's vocal. This is a great plugin. It's a, an analog EQ replication from the guys at PSP, it's called Noble Q, and I can see I've just used it here to add uh, around 6k just to boost it. Uh, so as well as this, uh, probably my favourite element of the song was something which I created just to basically to keep musical interest, which I've always tried to do and trying to develop, is making sure that our progressions and our melodies are always changing throughout our songs. Yeah. So I think that one of the, the main things that we've learned over the years is that if a melody is playing for three minutes, yeah. if it's not evolving, if it's not changing, it, you lose interest, you really yeah, lose you interest quickly. Just take a look, a look at this one, this is a counter melody which I wrote. It's just a simple sound from the factory bank in Nexus. But you'll see the MIDI file. Like it's constantly climbing. Yeah, it's, it's walking up the scale. 
So that's it for this walkthrough guys. It's been a lot of fun to make. It's been quite nostalgic for us looking back at Underneath. Uh, such a big song for us. So glad to see so many of you are still enjoying it and hope you learned something. Yeah, be sure to like this video, comment and subscribe because we're gonna be posting a lot more content like this soon. And if we didn't answer any of your questions about Underneath, feel free to put them in the comments below and we'll answer them. So like, subscribe, leave the comments and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.